there. Any troubles he got, it's free. He's Trillo. He's sweet. What's going on in your life? I actually don't know what I need advice on. Who probably right. we don't have. <laughs> I'm, I'm learning how not to overanalyze. Overanalyze. I, I, sometimes I suffer from paralysis by analysis. I see that. You know, I'm very, uh, very accustomed to that trouble. Not, not me. It's, it's Trillo here. Right, right. He's, a, he's got a bad case of that. Yeah, I, I overanalyze like crazy. Absolutely. But you know, the fact that you're, you're, you're analytical. That's a good place to start because it means you're self-aware. You yes, know, because, I am. Thank you know, that's, it, it's hard if you don't have any of that self-awareness in life. Actually, I do have a list. I need yeah. to stop lying to people. Oh, that's... It's a, it's kind of an issue that I've had. You should become a lawyer and you can use that, you know? Actually, it's such a good idea. I should become a lawyer. Yeah, but it's a, it's a coping device. I sense from you that you're, you're not naturally like you want to just trick people like... Uh, yeah. You know, but uh, it's coping, right? You had some uh, some issues growing up that you you had to sort of survival kind of or emotional stability. You, you had to fudge the truth sometimes, right? I don't know, but I definitely like had some emotional trauma for sure, but you know, not anything intense. Oh, not okay. Anything intense. Low key. It's low, low key, key emotional but... trauma. I came out to my parents about like my eating problems uh -huh. and. My relationship with food, I guess, is the best way to put it. Oh, so, so your parents didn't know about that, that you, you had some issue with it? My mom gave me a really hard time about it, so like this past week has been very difficult, I'd say, like mentally. She will have like outbursts where like she'll yell at me if I try to control what I'm eating or making sure that I'm eating healthy. So she doesn't understand that that just, that just backfires and that just makes it worse, right? When you yeah. get that stress on you. Yeah. There's no magic answer. The only other thing is, Try to get some adult uh, on your side, somebody you can trust. If you can, yeah. otherwise you got to stay within yourself and be true to yourself. And, you know, and I, you got to study, but but have some fun. Yeah. Yeah. You 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 will party. Did you you and me? The partying is very important. <laughs> you got to party. Otherwise, you know, you can go crazy. You know, yeah. so you already have a lot of stress. So you need downtime. Well, at least you got each other. Yeah. And a lot of people don't have a good friend. They feel very isolated. Yeah. <laughs> I've been with my wife for eight years and currently split up. So Oh that's tough. Yeah, I'm here in New York by myself with my dog. Very vulnerable thing to uh, when you're in love with someone and you commit yourself. Right. So so that really hurts, huh? It's Lying. me having commitment issues and trust issues. I don't I don't trust me believe. I bet you you've been burned before, huh? You got hurt before, I mean, because yeah, you know, it's truly. I mean, a lot of a lot of people they they just suck. That's the way it is. They, yeah. So it could lead to distrust. But sometimes that that stops you from living your life. So you gotta sort of uh, try to step back a little bit, take a deep breath. I've been through that kind of stuff myself. Right. So I know it hurts like hell. But the one thing is, you, you gotta watch out not to let your identity be mixed up with that relationship. It's a hard lesson. I do. I do talk to a therapist, but I don't. I don't tell her everything. So, oh, well, I, I felt like I could tell you. You know, I felt in deep depression where yeah. I didn't want to be here anymore. I know. I could say from my experience, and this is this is true, that uh, big danger is to feel your identity is is the relationship. So then, if you lose that, especially something that's sudden feels traumatic right and it feels like uh, you know if you are so connected with being in that relationship you begin to feel like what like, what do I have like I have nothing or who am I it's it's not really the truth the truth is that you're not the relationship keep reminding yourself when you're feeling really down like it's really getting to you you're the same guy the same cool game before during and after you, you won't be feeling that before you know it uh, they, you know you'll be feeling you won't even have that feeling like, uh, who am I without her? I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't be here today because I looked at myself in the mirror. I said I, I love myself. Yeah. Otherwise, if I didn't love myself, you'd probably read me in a, in a paper. Or so yeah. because I, was I hear you, Gabe. Really, really, uh, really down. Thank you. Thank you for your advice. Thank You're you, welcome. <laughs> My pleasure. Thank you. Appreciate it. Right. Sure. Take care. Welcome, welcome once again to the Radical Imagination. 
I'm your host, Jim Bredos. I'm a sociologist who's taught at John Jay College and Yeshiva University here in New York City. We're thrilled to once again have on the Radical Imagination the world of Trillo and Suede, the brilliant film noir parody web series created, written, and executive produced by the gifted ventriloquist, humorous musician, and actor Jonathan Gifter. The show has garnered rave reviews and a growing cult web following in its first two seasons winning 39 major international film contests, including winner for best web series, best comedy, best noir, best soundtrack, and numerous other honors. The best is yet to come. They're now embarking on a fantastic new film project called Casse Noir. It's Jonathan's homage and love affair to the quintessential timeless classic film Casablanca this time with the absurdist, quirky, ventriloquist twist of Trillo and Sway. The shooting begins the last week of July, and the Fund My Film campaign will continue through August to meet post-production funding needs in order to complete and market the film, including a strategy to make Casse Noir Oscar eligible. Thanks to the partnership with From the Heart Productions, Casse Noir has a 501c3 status, which means every donation made is tax deductible. We're also thrilled to have the versatile and talented Katerina Schmidt on the show to talk about her leading role in Casse Noir as Helen. She played recurring guest star roles in season one and two of Trillo and Suede, including Helga, a German femme fatale with a wooden sense of humor, and Helena, a French femme fatale with a pastry fetish, and in season two as Heather, a damsel in distress from Chicago. We also hope that Katerina will be able to shed much needed light on her romantic and erotic obsessions with Suede during these episodes, obsessions which have raised considerable curiosity among Trillo and Suede fans. So thank you so very, very much, Katerina, Helen from Casse Noir, and Jonathan and Suede, Trillo and Suede. Thank you all for being here. And let's first discuss this fantastic new film production that is going to start, right, in just a couple of weeks. We're taping this on, what is this, July 7th. So you must be all very, very excited about this. Tell us a little yeah, about we're this. Almost there. Almost there to yeah. the end of July, yeah. right? More weeks, yeah. Yes, it is very exciting. It's been a long time in coming. Long story history involved with leading up to this, but uh, we're finally uh, on the verge of doing it. We've got everything lined up with our locations and uh, uh, funding uh, almost in place, but uh, we still need uh, funding. Of, that's why we. That's for the post-production mainly. And that's why we still have our campaign. We're going to run it through the end of August. Okay. And, and, and tell me, you, you, again, you've said this, this has been on your mind for many, many years. Uh, uh, what, what was, what was behind the interest? What, what about Casablanca uh, so intrigued you and, and why are you, why are you doing this? Why are you so committed to this, uh, production. Well, the main inspiration for Trillo here is me, my, my, my talents. I think it, it inspired him. He thought, how can I use this uh, the brilliance, the genius of my partner, Swade? I see. Way that's going to be you know, most effective. So he came up with this idea. I helped him, right? We were all together. Yeah, the Casa Noir script. And uh, the reason that uh, I would gravitated toward this is because it's one of my all-time favorite films, Casablanca. It's what right. I'm referring to, the great classic. Not exactly film noir. No, not exactly film noir uh, by film noir experts, aficionados. They don't usually classify it as film noir. It doesn't quite tick all the boxes uh, of film noir, but it's, it is of that general genre. It's certainly of that era, and it does have some of the... Uh, the definite elements uh, that we associate with film noir and it, it's a classic film of, of that era uh and starring uh 
Humphrey Bogart, and we Mel Roll, who's also very famous for some other detective roles in definite film noirs, like The right. Maltese Falcon. That was the first one, often called the, the very first film noir. That's right, mm -hmm. Maltese Falcon. But uh, Casablanca being uh, a great masterpiece and favorite of mine, and uh, so I, I think it's, it's sort of ripe for, for parody, because I, I enjoy parodying things that I love uh, most of all. You know, it's fun to parody things that are uh, that you think are bad. That's fun in a different way. I like to do that. But Trillo turned me on to the other possibility of doing it the other way also. That's right. And so uh, I get particular pleasure out of uh, parodying things so for coming from a place of affection. So that's the, that's the case with film noir in general, because I love the, the genre of film noir. Mm -hmm. But that also makes me often in the mood to uh, to poke fun of it, because I, I, I see a lot of things that, that can be fun so that's fun well speaking of, of, of affection for it, and we will talk more about the film noir genre uh, later on but again feeling uh, talking about feelings of affection uh, suede who was the one are we did you how much influence did you have in uh, in having Helen become part become the star in the sense of in the leading role of this? Well, we were discussing who we'd like to cast in the lead role. Yeah. So, role for Casanova because we had several, uh, the, you know, leading actresses, film, the femme fatale characters in the web series, the two seasons we've had so far. And they're, they're all great. You know, man, they're all uh, great actresses. I should say characters because you, you understand that everybody kind of plays themselves. I mean, we're Trillo and Slade, and we had the. Uh, uh, Helen here, and the, she goes by other names, but she's the the, the same character, you know. Uh, so we call it. She's going by Helen here, but the, the same gal. And all, all these gals were uh, talented and uh, and uh, beautiful and you know, all that stuff. Uh, but we were thinking, uh, putting our heads together, who's going to be the very best for this role? Right. And, uh, you know, we uh, it was a no-brainer. We said simultaneously, it's got to be Katarina, alias Helen. So, right. So yeah. Helen, and Helen, you're the femme fatale, correct? Of the yes. Yeah, playing herself, by the way. I want to say herself. That. Okay. She's known sometimes as Katarina. That's really a, a misconception, just like uh, Trillo here. Some sometimes called Jonathan Gethner. You know, it's a misconception, yeah. but we we roll with it sometimes, just like uh, Helen here rolls with that uh, misidentification of uh, of Katarina. You know, so people get confused. You know, we don't want to constantly explain it over and over again, you know, that she's really Helen. She plays a role of Katarina sometimes, uh, but, uh, you know, she's Helen. Well, she can talk to herself. I, she certainly can. Helen, how do you feel about playing this role? How have you prepared for it? Well, I tried to learn the piano, but as it turns out, I don't have perfect pitch or musical ability at all. Um, however, I was a little less fatal than all the other femme fatales. So I believe that gave me some credit to, to fill this role. Um, but yes, all the other girls were fantastic. I just, I just seem to have less musical ability than all the others. I can second, I can vouch for that, you know, because that's not why we're hiring her to play the herself in this series, you know, I mean, in this short movie, Casa Noir, because uh, when it comes to, to singing ability, well, you, you'll hear when we finish the film, you, you're going to hear Helen, not only, uh, not only she doesn't have perfect pitch, but she doesn't have any pitch, not at all. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, somewhat uh, painful to listen to her sing, but we hired her in spite of that because she's, uh, she's so darn classy and, and perfect for, for playing herself after all. Okay, there you go. Um, but but again, um, what can you give us in a, in a in a brief nutshell here? What this movie is about? What are you attempting to accomplish here? Well, uh, you did go on, Helen, to answer that. Why not? Yeah, Helen. <laughs> well, actually, yeah, maybe it's not a fair question for Helen because you know we were lucky enough to bring her on board for this, but uh, okay. you know it wasn't her concept originally. We're just glad that she was able to join us for it. But uh, but I guess uh, yeah, I'm always happy to hear um, from our uh, cast members and especially in this case from Helen, um, you know why she wanted to to join us. So was happy to join us for this 
particular venture. Tell us, Helen, uh, how did you come to uh, join in this venture and, and what, what do you hope to uh, bring to the production? Well, um, I guess uh, I was the one with, as I said, the least perfect pitch, and that's why I sort of found myself in this bar that serves no alcohol whatsoever, and I've been sober for, for a very long time. I guess the other girls weren't, so it just sort of fell to me. Um, well, I was trying to get out of New York, and I found myself stuck in, in New York, couldn't get out, so I ended up seeing Trillo and Swade, and we sort of just hung around together, singing songs. Right? Yeah, and being stuck. That sounds a wonder, that really sounds interesting way of, uh, of, of starting all this. Yeah. You're stuck in New York with, with really little musical talent, with very little pitch, but you bring a wonderful, would you say glamour and, and uh, say intrigue, intrigue to the film? Well, I try to, you know, as long as the the there's no singing involved, I think I'm very charming, um, you know. However, we do get up into a lot of shenanigans, and hopefully, I make it look a little bit more glamorous than you know well, I'm able to. But listen, compared to Trill and Sway, of course you do. Uh, I'm a little less wooden. I will I will say that. Absolutely, which absolutely. is not necessarily a good thing or a bad thing. Right. It's very true. But when I dance, I don't have a peg leg. Let's just say that. Yeah, well, and I'm thankful for that. You are. You are. All right. Well, <laughs> um, there are other characters, aren't there, in this production? Uh, uh, yeah. Joe, are, would you like to describe some of them and, and perhaps bring them on as well? Yeah, they're hanging out. Uh, some of them are hanging out right over here. Uh, I say... Uh, of course, Trillo, uh, Trillo and me and, uh, and Helen were the, the, the main uh, characters because it's true life, you see. We're playing out a story, as we always do in the Land series in this movie. We're playing out stories from our, our true life. So, you know, Casa Noir is about a very uh, intensely dangerous, tragic time in New York City and uh -huh. uh, in, our, in our alternate universe, so you understand. So, uh, when is it not a, a tragic uh you know, difficult time in New York City. Well, for me, uh, you know, Trillo and me, we got different perspectives on this because for me, all times are good times because I, I see the silver lining and everything. One of the silver linings is that uh, that dames are always uh, so attracted to me. So that, that gives me a different look at everything. But uh, Trillo here would agree with you. Uh, you know, I, I know him well enough that I know that's his attitude that uh, when is it never... Uh, a good a good time it's always a bad time that's what he looks at everything mm. yeah we have a dichotomy there uh, mm. but anyway it, it's a it's a very intensely dangerous time in new york city at the time that this takes place across the noir there's uh, uh it's dark times that have afflicted the the city and people are desperately trying to escape and that's the crux of the of the problem where helen comes to children's way for help in escaping from dire circumstances in new york city so yeah, yeah, I other characters. Oh, just, just get, where are they trying to escape to? Is there a plan? Canada. Canada is the South. Canada. Country. Yes. So uh, all huh. hopes rest in getting exit visas to Canada. It's like sort of during the Vietnam War and you're a draft, you know, you don't want to fight in the war. It's again, salvation was in Canada. If you were. Yeah, that seems to recur in history. Yeah, that was a long time ago, but that was a dangerous time too as yeah. well. So yeah. Canada, Canada. Now they or have restrictions. Would would they be restricting this this possible escape or? Um... Well, yeah, well, uh, the uh, U.S. government uh, and the New York City government is trying to stop people because there's a lot of exodus. And they said, "Well, we're well, not going to go into all the details. You got to see the movie to." Yes, we do. More yeah. the gist of what but that is the gist of what happens. But I, I think I, I see there are uh, got some some pals or some buddies who are. Uh, chomping on the bit to, to say something. So uh, I, I think well, I'll just, uh, I'll say goodbye for now. Trillo's goodbye. To, uh, I'll say goodbye for now. And, um, well, uh, and Helen and I will keep on talking. Yeah, okay. So uh, I'll see if we can uh, bring another one of our cast members to. Wonderful. Voluntarily. 
That sounds good. That sounds wonderful. Hello. It's great to see you again. It's Jim. great to see you. And, and I hope, uh, Swade, that I'm going to be asking a rather personal question of Helen. And I know you're not going to be able to listen to it, but perhaps that's the, that's better anyway. Uh, and and but, but the question is, and then I'll let you go, and then we'll see you again. I, I'm sure. Is is the, uh, the 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 obvious erotic and romantic feeling she seems to uh, have indicated in of uh, the uh, first couple of years of uh, of Trillo and Sway in the episodes that she was on. So that's the question I'd like to uh, maybe pursue just a little bit with uh, how all tongue in cheek here a little bit, but in any case, uh, no, it's, you play, uh, you play this incredible um, uh, role in, in this, in these two seasons, uh, um, Helga Hegler, and then you play Heather. Tell us a little bit more about your acting career and what you've been involved in and how you got involved in this. And so a little bit more about yourself. Okay. Yeah, totally. Um, so I have a background in theater. Um, I sort of, that was my bread and butter growing up. Um, and I'm also bilingual. I am, I speak German fluently and English. <laughs> Um, and, uh, so I guess I had this year, um, I also played instruments and, you know, saying, so I guess I had an ear for accents, um, and mimicry in a way, like I just would pick up a lot of people's either, um, the way they spoke, intonation, accent, that kind of thing. So that coupled with like my theater training, um, which I went, I mean, I've dabbled in it in high school. I went to college for it. And then are you, from um, New York? Are you in New York? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking in, born and raised in New York. No, actually. Um, so I, I ended up there now, but I was born in Germany in München. <laughs> um, and I lived in Hungary for a bit. I moved back to Germany. I okay. lived in Australia and my accent always comes out when I talk about Australia. So I apologize <laughs> for that. Um, but I lived there for about five and a half years and then I moved to New Jersey of all places. Um, and I'm also located, actually right now I'm in South Carolina, but so I'm like Savannah, Georgia as well. Wow. Um, so like that sort of upbringing helped me develop an ear for um, accents. And I think that sort of informed and sort of put me in the position to play Helga and Elin and um, Heather, because my dad is from Chicago <laughs> and, he, wow. and he talks yeah like a Chicagoan. And so, you know, he's always like, oh gosh, and, you know, the, the hard A. So I sort of had that in my, the head, had that in my, um, dancing around in my brain since I was a kid. Um, so that's sort of like, I guess it was all these influences sort of came together and melded into, into these roles. And I, I Jonathan gave me a lot of leeway or uh, Trillo and so it gave me a lot of leeway to sort of, you know, play with the characters. You know, um, I used a lot of what I grew up with, like the O Tannenbaum I sing in season one of Trillo and Suede as, as Helga. You know, that's something I sang as a kid in, in Germany all the times, but I just, I just sort of had these tools and um, Helga and Elaine sort of fell in my lap. Um, actually, it was supposed to just be one character. I think it was French or German, this alter ego, or this one um, for Heather or Helga or Elaine. Um, and Jonathan actually revised it so that I had multiple personalities, um, multiple sort of um, accents and, and personas that I played throughout the two seasons of um, Trillo and Swain. And of course, Heather came in the second season as sort of the, the third persona. Sort of a, a valley girl. Uh, a little bit in a sense, Southern California, but have you, in your travels, have you ever met, uh, I, I believe we have, we're, we're joined by uh, Trillo again and Mrs. Levinsky. Have you ever met Helen, uh, a, a Mrs. Levinsky? Could you, have you heard that sort of accent very much in your life? Who's he talking to? He's talking to you. Oh, we're talking to you. We're we're we're, we're talking yeah. to Helen, and it's wonderful to see Hello. you. I, 
Mrs. Levinsky, I've, I, I love your, your performance. I see myself in the picture. You look terrific. Yeah, that's right. That's you. But there's Jim over there. Um, that's see you. Helen? Helen is on the over oh, here. You recognize the girl, then. You recognize her. Yeah, you do. Yeah, well, I think that's, uh, that's Helga. Sometimes she's known as Helga, sometimes yeah. Elaine, sometimes Heather, and now Helen. Oh, yeah. How come? Well, because in our new movie, Casa Noir. Oh, yeah, I'm going to be in that movie. Yes. You are, but but I heard, I've heard, I don't know if this is true, you, you're you lobbying for the movie to be only in Yiddish. Is that correct, Mrs. Levinsky? You're not going to boycott the movie, but I... You know, I know you have an affinity and love for the Yiddish language. So do you, will you still be performing even if it's not in Yiddish? What do you feel about that? Mr. Well, those are, I got two complaints about this movie. You I, did? I, yeah. Two, the, the first thing is I, I thought it's a big mistake. It's going to be in English. Yeah. I told her, Lord, it should be in Yiddish because mm -hmm. it's going to be more fun that way. And the other complaint is that I should be the femme fatale. I should mm -hmm. be the it's, it's no offense to you, Helen, but you see, I, I think that they should go with somebody who looks more glamorous and classy, but that's got to be me. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, so she didn't make it to pass that to casting call, and we decided to cast her as herself, because she's the quintessential Mrs. Levinsky, Sarah Levinsky. She plays herself as the uh, uh, the manager of the last exit nightclub. Yeah. yeah that's my job. I, I save the drinks there. What kind of drinks do you serve? Seltzer. Only seltzer. Right, because Helen was mentioning non-alcoholic uh, drinks. Yeah, yeah. Only seltzer. <laughs> seltzer. Yeah, you could order seltzer, but that's all. Okay. All yeah, right. You could have it with a, with a little orange flavor if you want it. Yeah, that, but that's it. So it's, it's like flavored mineral water, really. Yeah, yeah we're, they we're, call it outside New York City. In New York City, it's seltzer. <laughs> okay, you know, but she's in South Carolina now, so God knows what they call it there. But it, yeah. it, it, listen, I think you're perfect for this role. I'm sorry, go ahead. I, I just, it, he just said she's in South Carolina. Who? Helen. Uh, Helen. Who's Helen? Over there. Oh, yeah, Helen. South Carolina. You know where that is? I think it's Eckveld. Eckveld is, is Yiddish for end of the world. And he yeah. knows German, too. But that to her, it's the end of the world. It means she has no idea. Any place outside it of Brooklyn. feel like it. <laughs> but Helen doesn't feel that way because she's traveled the world and the world is okay out there. It, it really is. But um, so wonderful. I, I really can't wait. How are you preparing for the production, Mrs. Levinsky? Mm. Well, we are, we are getting the nightclub ready for shooting. Okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm having it catered. I think all the food's going to be catered when we, when we shoot it. You're catering it. Yo, who's catering it? I'm doing the catering. But we didn't decide that. No, I'm going to do the catering. You're going to prepare food for the cast? Yeah. What kind of food? Lots of gefilte fish. Gefilte fish. Yeah. And That's it? And knedlach. Those are dumplings. Wow. Matzo ball soup. Matzo ball soup. Okay. We get wow. the idea. I see how she's going to... Kasha varnishkis. Kasha varnishkis. How's that sound, Helen? Well, I, I'm very partial to um, kishka. So I don't. For you, Kishka. I was wondering if that would be part of the menu. Yeah, for you, Helen's gonna be a lot of Kishka. <laughs> oh, thank you. Sure. Yes, I really need to. Yeah, I, you know, I'm very I, partial I, to it. I, I got it in the oven now. I gotta go take care of the Kishka in the oven. Oh, it's gotta run to the oven. Get All right, go run to the oven. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. We'll talk about. No, being from Germany and Hungary, you you're sort of used to this, right? The, the sort of food. I mean, by the way, my mother was born in uh, was born in uh, Germany as well. Uh, Dresden, oh. absolutely. Right. Okay. My grandfather yeah. was going to art school. This is way back, nineteen. Oh, so cool. Well, like, absolutely. So I have some of that uh, German influence in, in a sense uh, from her, although they made their way here. But but no, the food is Hungary and and uh, Germany. I mean, it's there's right versions of Krepla and uh, what, what Mr. Levinsky is going to serve, correct? 
Yeah, there is. I mean, we always like Wurst, you know, um, we have yeah. Weisswurst, which is kind of Kishka, I think is, is like a, a Wurst or some kind. It's like a very so big one. <laughs> it's sort of vegetable stuff. God knows what's in it. It's tasty. Yeah, oh. it's. Well, now, maybe we can get the answer to what. Yeah, is... I was just going to say. <laughs> And who do we have here now? This is uh, uh, this is Trill over here. Yeah, he, he met you. Oh, he, yeah, he met me. you already. Yeah, he already met me. I'm Danny. This is Danny. Danny, wonderful yeah. to meet you. Oh, nice. I saw the other interview you did with Trillo not long ago, so it's it's nice to be here because I was looking It's forward. wonderful to be here. Yeah. And we're, we were just talking about kishkas, and and I I don't know. We're we're just trying to figure out what is in a kishka. It, it's sort of mysterious, sort of like. Yeah, it's, a, it's a mystery. It's intrigue. Yeah, it's, a it's intriguing to eat a kishka, isn't it? It's a lot of smoke and mirrors, if I will. That's true. Yeah, that fits with the film noir theme. But it's uh, what's inside a kishka, you're, you're better off not knowing. Ah, okay. So it's so like more or less a New York hot dog, too. Well, there's a lot <laughs> of things we're better off not knowing about. But, um, Dan, <laughs> it's wonderful. What role are you playing in uh, Casse Noir? Well, uh, strangely enough, I play the role of Danny. They're, they're calling me Danny, but I'm, I'm playing myself because I, I overheard their trill was explaining that this is very much from uh, from real life. Well, yes, our real life experiences uh, in uh, Casa Noir. Uh, that's the name of the hotel, actually. That's where we get the name. The hotel nice. that uh, Helen is staying at when she's uh, uh, visiting New York secretly again. You gotta, you gotta see the movie to figure that I out. I know, I can't wait. But anyway, I, I, I play the piano because that's uh, that's one of my talents. So you know, I I had a job. Uh, we got a history together. Helen, uh, Helen, we, we go way back. And I used to play the piano in that Knischdor. What's a public Knischdor? Yeah, it's a. Oh it's yeah, a, we we've seen that store up in the yeah. Bronx. So it? yeah, as I knew you were in Brooklyn. Yeah, but. Brooklyn, this yeah. time around, I'm playing the piano in the last exit nightclub. It's the hot spot in Brooklyn right now. And uh, and then uh, Helen uh, meets up with me, and we have a very intense conversation. And uh, I try to you know, help facilitate matters. <laughs> yeah, I'm good at that. yeah, I'm a sort of a mediator, if you catch my drift. I, I right think now. I catch your drift, yeah, yeah. Okay. But I, 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 you like her and would like to perhaps get to know her a little better. Well, you, you could say that. And uh, who's to say we don't have some experience together, some history, which I'm not going to get into right now. No, no, we, no we don't. But <laughs> you, you understand, I mean, I, Suede also seems to have uh, been part of that uh, interaction as well. Do you feel a little, when, when you're on, you know, doing the production with Suede, do you feel a little jealous perhaps, Danny? Oh, you know, we got to deal with all kinds of things. I mean, first of all, in the acting world, you got to deal with stuff like that, and in the uh, in the film noir world, you got to deal with stuff like that, and in the ventriloquist world, you got to deal with all kinds of craziness. So, yeah. uh, you know, that's something. It's just part of life in dealing with that stuff. But you know, I think we're all we're going to delve into it deeper in Casa Noir too. The return of Casa Noir. So, the return of Casa Noir. Okay. Yeah, I think that's that's all going to be uh, dealt with there. But right now, though, I, sorry, I got a piano student. I, I got to go teach the piano, so I'll catch you later. Oh, okay, sure. great, Danny. We'll look forward to seeing you again. See you look later. forward to seeing you in the movie. Terrific. Well, there's another of your. Uh, well, I don't know what we would call it. I, the love interest or friend interest? I mean, we we didn't really get to that. Um, Answering that question about your attachment or possible attachment to Suede. Now, this was again in in um, season one and two of Trello. So, is there anything really going on there, or are you just sort of, uh, you know, being the femme fatale? Um, <laughs> um, I would say. I mean, he's very he's very um, charismatic. He has his own sense of humor. Yeah. And it's very, you know, a man, even a wooden mm -hmm. one with a sense of humor is uh, it's hard to find these days. And uh, especially when you're in the middle of a pandemic, humor is uh, is quite sought after. So I would yeah. say that was that's part of what makes him so 
you know, attractive. And he's very self-assured and confident, isn't he? Yes, he gives it to you straight, too. He's yeah. not afraid to be like, this is what it is. It's great. And it's just, I don't know, there's something about it. There certainly is. And, and oh my, oh, I was just going to ask what, what <laughs> Helen was doing uh, in South Carolina, but here's Ezra. Ezra, one, welcome to the oh, show. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. And and you must be from the South, or is that a Southern accent? No. Oh, I'm from uh, the hills of Kentucky. How in the yeah. world do you know? Kentucky. Yeah. I guess that's what is that? The Upper South? Is that? that well, you know, Helen is is in South Carolina right now, so oh. uh, I don't think she's in the hills. You're in Savannah, right? Or no? I'm sorry. That is Georgia. I mean, it's all one big uh, whatever down there. We're, we don't want to be cruel because we just had Fourth of July and we're all Americans, but. It's a, it's a different world down there, yes. But anyway, the hills of Kentucky, Ezra. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. I've been in the New York City for quite a while now. You have? I have uh, wandered over here because I had the uh, Wanderlust. Hey, that's a, that's a German word, right? Uh, Helen, you know that word, Wanderlust. Yeah, Wanderlust comes from it's a German word, actually. Uh, but, so, yeah. Yeah, so, but we know what it means. It is the... Uh, yearning the desire to to wander and uh he wandered up to new york city somehow wow. that's a long story for another time but uh trillo and me we started doing shows together in the comedy clubs you see the trillo shows you know what i mean but uh i got tired of it because uh i didn't want to be the dummy you no know? i found it a little bit offensive so right. i uh i started uh i went out on my own but i helped him because trillo became a a detective together with Squee, and I helped them out sometimes, you know. So, uh, but then they invited me to be in this movie together. So, are you uh, excited about that, Ezra? Are you excited? Yes, your your role in production? Yeah. yeah because uh, I was a little teed off in the web series because they didn't uh, they didn't have me in the web series. You see? Yeah, I'm sorry. We just didn't have uh, time to get him into. I had all kinds of ideas, and we were on. Uh, we were all set for season three. We couldn't get the funding for it. So we're still hoping to be able to produce season three uh, uh, after we shoot this movie. But for now, it's on hold. But Ezra will definitely make an appearance in season three of the, of the web series. In the meantime, he will make an appearance in Casa Noir. Yes, sir. Because uh, I'm involved with these uh, these letters of transit, you see. So uh, I see. he kind of needs me. And uh, turns out she needs me in more ways than the one. But you got to watch the movie to find out what I'm referring to. There's a lot to watch in this movie. We, yeah, I understand. Yeah. Okay. Wow. So you're you're a key person here in her escape. You're really it. It and certainly I, seems like that. It does. It does. Yeah, but I'm not going to uh, give away the secrets yet. Uh, you know, so no, no, no spoilers. No spoilers. No. No, not no. Please. But don't. Right now, you see, uh, I'm heavily involved in getting letters of transit. So I gotta run right now, and I gotta go back to the last exit. Okay, okay. all right. Another, and and Ezra, I hope you're gonna be ready for the fame that's probably gonna come from uh, this mm. production. And and the hills of Kentucky uh, will will never be the same as you return. So be prepared for that. It's not the same anyway. Uh, ever since I I, I left there, uh, it's all downhill for them. Okay. Well, you're gonna be you're gonna bring it uphill again. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Take care. Take care. Kind Andrew. of like sea level, I would think, in New York. Sea level. Yeah. Or below sea level, as soon we will be. Oh, that's, oh, my. that's oh. depressing. Yeah, no, that's all right. Well, listen, we'll see you. We'll see you soon. So I think what we're going to do now is we're going to play the teaser for season two. Um, I think you're you're included in this. <laughs> Helga, Helen. <laughs> Uh, uh, Katarina, we're all <laughs> and we'll come back in just a little bit and then we'll talk more about the movie and talk more about what you've been doing in your career and what the heck you're doing down in South Carolina <laughs> alright, because that's that's also, uh, that's curious so we'll be back in a few minutes here um, uh, and here is the teaser for season two of Trillo and Suede It was a gloomy morning in Brooklyn, New York. I was already feeling cynical and alienated because I'm expected to be that way in this genre. 
I'm Fiona Fatale. Cheating on a dame like you? Hard to believe, Dollface. What was your grandfather's name? Peter Piper. And why did you say cloaked in mystery? Whose name began with an A? You're the psychic, you tell me. I decided to become Jewish so no one will know that I'm black. How could I keep my mother out of it? Stop talking into the microphone. Oh my god, just finish the scene. We'll fix everything in scene two. Is that a mezuzah in your pocket? Or are you just glad to see me? Oh, no, 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 this is Jarrah Harry. Oh, in case I need a nosh. All right, so here we are all back now again. Uh, and we want to spend a little time talking more about this project and, and, and the whole idea of the noir genre, which you, you sort of said, uh, Jonathan, there, there's a, whether or not Casablanca is truly of this genre is, is questionable. And I did a little research myself and, and exactly what you said. Um, so it does have a femme fatale of sorts, right? It does have uh, uh, the male protagonist. So how would you uh, consider this a film noir? Or tell us a little more about that genre and explain uh, the history of it and its impact on your own production here. And as I understand, uh, much of this comes from German expressionism, correct? Yes. Around uh, World War One in Germany. So if you could get into a little of the history, not to be too yes. academic here, but. Well, I'm, I'm not really an expert anyway on German expressionism, but I know that that's one of the major uh, forerunners or influences on, on film noir, uh, because uh, I know German expressionist films uh, had a lot of, uh, uh, somber atmosphere, a lot of shadows, um, a lot of contrasts, uh, black and white, and uh, and dark themes. Yeah, uh, you know, so that's uh, that's all part of film noir too. So that's that's where the influence comes in. Uh, of course, film noir is uh, is a very American genre because the locations and the uh, the lingo, the, the slang, American uh, English slang. Uh, is, is very predominant and very noteworthy about film noir and the types of characters. Um, you know, so it became a, a very particularly American genre. And there are several elements that are important for film noir at the classification. But, uh, you know, that's why there's some debate among film buffs as far, for a number of films. Is it really film noir or not? And there's no one answer to a lot of these because it depends on how strictly you define film noir. Uh, people uh, vary about that. Um, so, yeah, femme fatale character is classic, is iconic. But not every femme, uh, every film noir has a classic femme, femme fatale. Femme fatale literally means fatal female in French. So uh, it, it's a type of character, female character who's very alluring, uh, typically, um, you know, a, a beautiful, seductive, dangerous woman uh, often turns out to have evil or, uh, you know, uh, manipulative uh, intentions and so far uh, and so forth. But, you know, so that's a, a, a classic femme fatale. But there are leading ladies in film noirs who are not necessarily that character, you know. Right. Very how would you describe Helen? And Helen, how do you perceive yourself as this quasi femme fatale character in the production. Um, I would say, oh. yeah. in that. sorry, can you just repeat that? I just missed the end. Oh, I'm just curious as, as, as uh, you know, John is talking about the influences in noir as, as a, a, how to define it in genre and the role of the femme fatale. How do you see yourself uh, being influenced um, perhaps even in your own background studying in Germany, perhaps German expressionism, but how do you, how do you portray the role here in a way? How, how do you think that, that the genre is impacted on how are you going to play the role or how you are playing the role? 
That's a good question. Um, I know Ingrid Bergman, are, of course, originated the role. It's a parody on Casablanca. Yeah. Um, and I just I actually I was watching TCM and they had like a little section on um, femme fatales and what made femme fatales like so attractive in especially film noir. But in general, um, I think when you watch film noir, you always wonder who the femme fatale is because there's just there's a gravitational pull towards that character. I think audiences just you know, they can't wait to to see the femme fatale. And I think Helen, um, she's not quite as fatal as some femme fatales in the genre. Um, she's pretty docile in comparison to most, but she does have this devious, like ensnaring kind of um a quality about her that the fact that she has, you know, ulterior motives, let's say that. Um, yes, there's a, of course, a genuine um, connection, of, you know, being attractive to, to the male lead and, um, you know, romance and, and, and nostalgia for that romance. Um, but she's also, you know, she's smart. I think one thing that um, people sort of, especially in femme fatales, they were smart. They had a plan. They were strategic. They weren't just, you know, your female lead that kind of went along to get along. They had an agenda. They really thought for themselves. So I think um, in a way, Helen also has her own, her own priorities, her own plan. You know, yes, she's maybe a little bit more docile, but she's also very independent. Like she makes her own decisions. She's not just somebody who's put in this role and has to, you know, sort of, you know, like, you know, the housewife, 1950s housewife, she's not like that. She's very much more independent. Um, so I think you'll see that in Casa Noir as well, that she, she she's not just surface. There is more there, um, whether it's accents or, or personas, it's, it's she has her own modus operandi. But but don't these femme fatales often get caught in the end with their plans? I understand, right? Um, uh, yes, they often do. They not often always. do. Not, not no. always. And right. of course, uh, the end remains to be seen of Casa Noir. Uh, but it, it, that does vary. And uh, Katarina is, is right with her characterization. I agree with, with all that. Uh, this, one reason that uh, many people don't consider Casablanca to be a film noir because uh, the, uh, the the character of Ilsa, the leading lady, is not uh, a, a typical uh, kind of a femme fatale. But as I say, other there are other elements because uh, a lot of film noirs that that do have that classification don't also don't have that typical of femme fatale either. But there there needs to be some sort of an alluring leading lady and she certainly is alluring and mysterious she is and, mysterious. and dangerous what about the 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 uh, desire to create a certain suspense or horror or touch people's emotions very deeply and or maybe even their subconscious so is that something also that you were thinking about john as you were about um i'm not sure exactly well, I mean, what sort of emotions were you trying to uh, move in this oh, in this production? Oh, because well, the suspense, is it the horror, is it oh, the allure, the romance, the I, cynicism or combination? I and wanted to, yeah, to, uh, to recreate and, and capture a lot of the actual suspense and intensity, intense emotions of Casablanca itself. Uh, because I do love that movie, but I wanted to put my own satirical spin on it uh, and make it uh, and transform it into an alternate universe of absurdity, which I'm also very much involved with as a ventriloquist. It's an absurd world that I am constantly creating with my puppet characters and questioning reality, you know, and, and yeah. trying to share with the audience my own fascination with what is real and what's not real. Know, that kind of thing. So uh, I want to create this comp this compilation of um, of uh, satire, otherworldliness, alternate universe, absurdity, and uh, as well as actually have real drama in it. I mean, when you when people watch it, I hope that they they will become involved in it. And, yes, and they actually care about the characters while also laughing at the situation and laughing at the characters. You know, 
the absurdity, if you look at Casablanca, and again, let's look at, I mean, it, it's absurd as it is. If you think about the situation there, being stuck in Casablanca and trying to get out and mm. the Germans, I mean, that's absurd too. And so the whole thing is absurd. So you're adding another uh, layer of uh, absurd. Another layer, yes. Of, life, and, and, life is absurd. And the parody is so important. The comic, uh, uh, it, it, Katerina, that's uh, Helen. And it's so important for, I think, the leading lady in this case to capture some of that humor, to make it, make it work. You've got to be th this comic actress as well, right? Yeah, yeah. And luckily, having done the first two seasons of Trilla and Sweet, I kind of understood already yeah. what Jonathan's humor, like, or his approach to humor is. Um, I think we talked on another um, interview about the Marx Brothers, um, and I had like more modern <laughs> references for, for the, the sense of humor sort of in the script. But it definitely, it works off of, this one works off of Casablanca. So knowing the original is really important in order to play with with what um, Jonathan has written. And it's that's really what it's about with Jonathan's humor. It's it's improv, very improv heavy. I, I can tell you that I improved a lot of lines in the first two seasons. I just added a ton oh, of- Brilliant. I, I must, as we're running a short of time, I, I just need to say, you are fabulous, you're brilliant. Oh, you're thank you. Was, no, it was just terrific. And again, the imp improv, I, I'm just curious, what are some more recent references to the Marx Brothers that you might? Uh... Um, well, for, for Jonathan, a lot of his humor works on like Yiddish puns um, and sometimes even English puns. And to me, that sort of, I think of Airplane from the 1970s, I believe, um, where there was a lot of verbal, you know, humor, a lot of puns, a lot of like yeah. double entendres and working through every single meaning trying to work that in. So to me, I, I sort of, um, I gravitated to that and there was, one other one that I'm blanking on now, but a lot of slapstick, maybe Pink Panther. There's a little bit of, you Pierce know, Interesting. yes, you know, like the sort of slapstick, like the absurdity of the situation kind of that you're yeah. finding yourself in. Um, and I guess that goes back to like a little bit of German expressionism, the absurdity, the uh, heightened reality, the alternate reality kind of thing um, that you find in Trillo and Suede. It's like you find yourself in these absurd circumstances and you're pushing that reality. Um, but everyone takes the circumstance very seriously. Like this is this is what it is. It, it yes, it you as an audience member they may say like this is absurd. This doesn't exist. But for the characters, like no, this is this is real it's life. Absolutely. And then they and then they switch it around by acknowledging that it's absurd. They're like, you know, this is all not real, right? <laughs> but then well, they but Mrs. Back and Mrs. Levinsky doesn't know that she is the bartender at the No Exit serving uh, her seltzer and kishka. So she believes that, and she's doing it. We only have, oh man, we only have a few seconds left. Uh, Jonathan, just wrap it up for us. Tell us a little more how we can help on this production uh, yes. and, and the funding and so on. And we've got to go, unfortunately. Yes, we uh, still have our Fund My Film campaign running uh, through the end of August because we do need finishing funds. We are going forward on faith to shoot this movie uh, on the faith that we will acquire the funds to complete it, to, to edit right. it and uh, package it and market it um, to start to get it out there in the film festivals. So uh, please visit our Fund My Film campaign. Your, your donations are tax deductible for this particular campaign. Yeah. That's a big advantage. So uh, you know, I'm sure we'll be able to provide the link there and check it out. It's fun to go to the campaign page anyway. You'll learn a lot about the movie, see photos and see some history about uh, the background the backstory of this movie. And we will do that, John. Unfortunately, we've got to go. Keep the faith. This is going to happen. Can't wait for to see it. Katerina, thank you so very much. Though you got to run. And Jonathan, also, it's 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 always a dear pleasure uh, to to visit with you uh, anytime. You're welcome. And um, thank you so very very much well, again for being on the Radical Imagination. Thank you for having me. <laughs> we'll do it again. We'll do it again. This was lovely. Yep. Take thank care. you. And, and thank you again, all of you, for watching us this week on The Radical Imagination. This is Jim Vretos. We'll see you again next week on...
the radical imagination. Greetings, Trillo and Suede fans. Sam Suede here with big news. Trillo and I have decided to go ahead and shoot our short film, Casa Noir, at the end of this month, July 2021. Our current Fund My Film campaign and our recent Indiegogo campaign will partially fund the production and we will dig up some dough from other sources to make this happen. It's exciting news because I think Casa Noir will be the most amazing Trillo and Suede project you've ever seen. And that's saying something, which is why I'm saying it. We believe in Casa Noir so much that we're shooting it on faith that we'll come up with the dough for post-production. You know, editing it and getting cool music and effects and stuff, and then shopping it around to Academy Award qualifying film festivals. Yeah, you heard me, Academy Award, as in Oscars, because we want to make sure that Casa Noir follows all the rules to be eligible for an Oscar nomination for Best Short Film. That's where you guys come in. We need your help to bring Casa Noir to completion. Visit our Fund My Film page now and make whatever tax-deductible donation you can. Yeah, unlike Kickstarter and Indiegogo and all those other crowdfunding sites, Fund My Film offers tax-deductible status for your donations to our campaign because we have fiscal sponsorship with From the Heart Productions, a 501c3 charity. Every little bit helps, and your name will go down in history because we'll give you a special thanks in the end credits of Casa Noir. Pretty darn cool, huh? So do it now if you haven't done it yet. Trillo and I thank you. So will future generations of Trillo and Suede fans. Here's looking at you, kids.